We are here today with Peter Catalanotti with Film Tucson at Old Arizona on the White Stallion Ranch. It's an honor to have you here, Peter, and we're here to talk about the film industry, your role with Film Tucson, Senate Bill 1708. A lot of stuff to talk about, but let's start with that. All right. Uh, SB 1708 is a bill that would bring filming back to Arizona in a major way. Uh, it's the number one thing that the studios are looking for. Uh, it's the, the driver that brings a lot of projects to different communities. The, the film tax credits, it's to be able to compete. Correct. And, and, the, and that competition is stiff. Yeah, the competition is very stiff. Uh, We've lost a lot of projects to New Mexico over the years because they have a lot of the same terrain. Obviously, they don't have saguaros like we do, but uh, they've been able to take a number of things away from us. Uh, and Arizona's film legacy has been going on for nearly 100 years. It's time to bring that back, mm -hmm. and incentives will be the way to do it. The most important part of it that kind of differentiates it from other bills is it has a component that encourages the development and building of sound stages, uh, which is an important thing that would bring filming back in a big way. Uh, we haven't seen any bills that have done something like this, so it kind of gives us a competitive edge. Mm -hmm. uh, we already know that there's some people in Tucson and some people in Phoenix that are planning on building sound stages once the bill passes, so uh, we can see things going off to a, a good start as soon as that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, we'll still be facilitating filming from other projects that um, may not necessarily need a, a soundstage, so it's, uh, it's just gonna bring filming back in a big way from top to bottom, and mm -hmm. we're ready for it. The Senate Bill 1708, the basis for that are film tax credits and the importance of that. There's a lot of misconceptions out about giveaways and things like that, which it absolutely is mm -hmm. not. No. And uh, if you could expound on that just a little bit. Sure, well, I encourage everybody to go read the bill. It's online. Uh, it's a lot of technical jargon, but it's, it's, it's not impossible to, to plow through. Uh, and you are correct. Uh, we're not giving money away. We're not giving tax dollars away. Uh, the film companies have to spend money here to get the rebate. It's no different than if you buy a toaster at Target and it comes with that little rebate card and you send that in and you get your check back. That's all it is, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's friendly to the taxpayer, it encourages jobs and, and uh, the, the economic impact that filming brings. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing all the way around. Mm -hmm. um, we've worked with a lot of big uh, producers and directors over the years. Uh, even without incentives, we were able to get Steven Soderbergh here, George Clooney, um, and a number of others. It, it's been really great to have them here. Uh, but it's difficult to get an entire project without incentives. Uh, we worked with uh, Todd Phillips, who directed uh, Joker, uh, one of the uh, the Hangover films, uh, that whole series of films, The Hangover, uh, filmed in uh, Nogales, uh, Arizona. It was a Warner Brothers production, and it was great to have them here. Uh, but that's just an example of a project that uh, is so large they they're they're not dependent on incentives. So we can get some of those, like when George Clooney wanted to shoot out here, incentives weren't the issue for him uh, and some other projects we've gotten. But uh, if we want to get an entire production here, it's going to be incentives that makes that happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, uh, let's let's talk about then the next steps that you're anticipating. There's a vote coming up very shortly. Mm -hmm. So some so the people that are, are in support of this, they could call their representatives and senators and and, and, and give them their support. But what is the next step that you see? Sure, so the next step is the bill will go in front of the House floor mm -hmm. and get debated. Um, it's too early to do it right now, but we will ask all of the people to support this bill, all the people who work in the film industry locally, to contact your representatives and let them know why this bill will bring economic impact to your lives. If you're a small business owner, if you're an actor, if you own a location such mm -hmm. as this, mm -hmm. uh, this bill is going to bring money into your pocket and into our communities. So uh, it's a little early right now, but we'll be putting a message out when the time is right uh, to let everyone know. Uh, we're working with uh, the lobbyists who helped write the bill and some other uh, folks uh, in Phoenix that uh, know more about where the bill's at at any given time. Mm -hmm. So we're taking marching orders from them, sure. and then we pass the info along to the public. Mm -hmm. So 
it's 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 kind of sitting in a committee right now. We're just waiting to get word. Once it's out of that and goes to the uh, floor of the house, then we mobilize, get the word out. Mm -hmm. After that, it goes to the uh, governor's desk for mm -hmm. signature, mm -hmm. and uh, we're confident he will sign it because of the economic impact it's going to bring. It's it's just it's a no brainer. Right. Yeah. I think there's also been a lot of misconception with the folks that are on the if you want to call it the opposing side, yeah. is that uh, they dispute the full-time jobs, but the technical uh, aspects of full-time work as film crews, it's not where they go to the same set every day unless it's, unless it's a, a scripted uh, series or something like that. The film crews work, they get done with that one, they wrap up and they go to the next one. Correct. So technically on the books, it shows like, well, they're, they're, they're all part-time work. Well, they're not part-time workers. Correct, you are they're, exactly right. Yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, there's, uh, when you look at the statistics and you look at the documentation, it doesn't really give that full picture. You're right, exactly right. Uh, the argument we've been hearing for years is uh, film jobs are temporary meaning the show shoots and then it pulls up stakes and moves on to the next town or the next project starts up. And our argument has been when you have incentives, the jobs themselves might be temporary, but the career is permanent mm -hmm. because that carpenter, that teamster, uh, that grip or lighting personnel, they work on this show and when it ends, they move on to the next one and mm -hmm. the next one. So their career keeps going. Mm -hmm. The career is permanent. Mm -hmm. And the production companies prefer to have local folks because they're rooted, they're grounded, their kids are in school and they want to work, they want to stay right there. Uh, and that's been an issue too. There's a lot of very talented film people in the state of Arizona, but they're having to go outside the state Correct. and then come back home and they want to have their, their families in a stable home, not traveling around so there's a I, there's a tremendous amount of support for this personally i think that it's going to get approved i feel very positive about it but there's a lot of work that has to get done Correct. and i think that we have to do what we can to inform the the public uh, I, i've talked to a lot of people honestly about this and so many of them aren't even aware it is going on yeah. but after i talk to them about it they're very supportive of it so the people that are voting on this need to be uh, uh, approached and talked to by the constituents and let them know that that they do support it for all of these reasons so we're we're, we're hoping that this effort's going to help out with this about a year ago uh, we were contacted by hbo uh, they've got a new uh, upcoming tv series called duster it's not aired yet and uh, for various reasons, they decided to film the first episode in Tucson. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't miss their footprint. They were all over town and it was a massive show. Uh, that really helped a lot of the locals understand why filming means jobs and economic impact because they saw it every day, uh, especially if a, they were filming on a road that was blocked and someone was trying to drive down that road. But they understood, uh, yeah, I have to go a little ways around, but look how many people are employed. Look at all the, the crew members and the technicians that are mm -hmm. here. Uh, right. And uh, it really filled the hotels. After the pandemic happened, the hotels were really hurting. Mm -hmm. So that really helped. We had uh, almost... Uh, uh, 8,000 hotel room nights over the course of three months. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I think the public is, has really gotten hold of that. Um, they also, because it was a period shoot uh, set in 1972 mm. in Phoenix, I might add, mm -hmm. uh, the vintage clothing stores and antique shops uh, made off like bandits in a great Prop way. Department. Yeah, they um, <laughs> they spent so much money on hair and costumes. The art department was just all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've been promoting that on our social media, uh, different local businesses who made money off filming. We've been sure to blast that on our social media so people understand it's these, these small businesses that benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Do you know uh, uh, any uh, background on the film schools that occur in Arizona in, at the universities, Phoenix and, and Tucson? So the University of Arizona has a really good alumni program and uh, we've stayed in touch over the years with many U of A graduates uh, who got their degrees in film. Uh, at the tail end of the HBO project, I got a call from a studio executive, I, I'm not going to say which one right now, but uh, he said, it sounds like you guys have incentives. You know, I've been working at this network for some time and I haven't been able to bring anything to Tucson where I'm from. 
because you don't have incentives. Mm -hmm. So we had this long discussion about uh, the incentives bill and so forth. So um, he's he and his team are watching. But the point I'm making here is that uh, U of A students that graduate uh, with a degree in film and television, they want to they want to stay here. Uh, and even if they go away to Hollywood and come back, we would love that too. Sure. Uh, but it's about incentives. They they have to go where the industry is, and it's uh, n it's it's not so large here in Tucson right now. Incentives will bring that here. That will bring all of those people back, uh, as well as a number of other uh, folks who work in other productions. Um, uh, there's a woman by the name of Nancy Haker who's a, a location scout. Uh, she was the location manager on uh, uh, Inuritu's uh, The Revenant, mm. uh, Into the Wild, uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, the George Clooney project that shot here. Right now she's getting ready to work on Spider-Woman. Uh, she's from Tucson, mm. and she hasn't been able to bring many things back because the projects she works on are so large, they're dependent on incentives. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was working on the HBO project here, and it was wonderful to have her because it was someone from Tucson getting to work in Tucson right. instead of uh, back in Hollywood. So mm -hmm. uh, again, incentives will make more of that happen. We've just got to get that bill to pass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, what are what are some of your long term plans for the for the uh, uh, for Film Tucson? What are what are some of your goals for the next one, two, three, four years? Our goal is to watch the incentives pass, and then we have that golden ticket, and we can take that to American Film Market. We could take it to any major film convention, film meeting, film festival, mm -hmm. because we'll be able to go to producers and directors with the thing they want most. Mm -hmm. So that's our main goal right now is uh, just to help promote the passing of the bill mm -hmm. and then market accordingly. Mm -hmm. too. But uh, we're very close to the end, so it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty thrilling right now. Yes. And uh, a lo it's got a lot of bipartisan support. That's mm -hmm. been the interesting thing here. Because of the way the bill was written, a lot of folks that I think in the past would have uh, opposed a film incentive bill uh, jumped right on it, and mm -hmm. uh, it's that's kind of put it over the edge. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, it's jobs. Yeah, and that's right. uh, everybody's uh, everybody works, and everybody yeah. wants it. There, there are so many creative people in Southern Arizona specifically uh, that it's uh, it, it's amazing, and the, the, just the talent pool that exists. Uh, it'll of course expand, sure. and as, as this uh, uh, industry comes back into the state, but they're starting off uh, well out of the blocks with the mm -hmm. talent pool they had to draw from, yeah. and the support of it with uh, uh, with with your office. Sure, and sure. Uh, I, I suppose you have a counterpart in Phoenix. We do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also a Flagstaff film offices. Uh, there's there's offices throughout the state that cover their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. uh, we cover Tucson and Southern Arizona and even into Mexico because we've done a lot of film projects that wanted to shoot in Mexico. The mm -hmm. George Clooney film, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. The Steven Soderbergh film, Traffic, mm -hmm. uh, also shot in Mexico. So we have contacts in Mexico on the film side and the federal agencies there so we can help take filming into there. And the reason for that is because uh, Nogales itself doesn't have a film crew, Tucson does. They're going to pull all of their crew and resources from Tucson. So it's to our benefit to get filming in those uh, outlying regions as well. Same with Bisbee, Douglas, some of these others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're going to do everything we can from uh, our crew here and uh, work very hard to, to get that. I, I, It's very important and yeah. uh, can't tell you how much it's appreciated for all the sure. efforts that you've put into this sure. and, uh, and and the team. You're, you're part of a, of a large team of people, a lot sure. of very professional people, and I think sure. they're doing a terrific job. Sure. Well, uh, my thanks has to go out to everyone watching this, everyone that's called their senators, called their representatives, emailed. Uh, you all are doing it. They're hearing your voice. Uh, I'm glad to spread the word and, and, and let you know where the bill's at and what to do next, but it's it's you guys doing it. It's and mm -hmm. it, it really, I know it sounds corny uh, to say uh, your voice makes a difference, but it's absolutely true. Every time I've gone up to the state capitol for testimony, uh, the uh, legislature up there says we've been getting calls and emails about this bill all day and night. And it, so it really does make a difference. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Well, you know, the Westerns have, uh, some people I talk to say, oh, Westerns, uh, they don't, they, they, they certainly do do them. There may mm -hmm. not be as many of them as there were in the 50s, uh, but they are definitely out there. Yeah. One of the recent ones was, uh, is 1883. Oh, yeah. Uh, you they know, hit. that's that's part of, kind of an offshoot of the, of the Yellowstone uh, uh, franchise, mm -hmm. which is also uh, ex extraordinarily successful. Mm -hmm. And the... Uh, quality of the costuming, uh, the horses, the saddles, the tack, uh, yeah. all, all of that stuff comes into play. Sure. And we just love to be able to be able to see some of that stuff come back here too. Um, I would agree. I mean, um, Arizona's legacy with Westerns is so enormous and it's all still right here. So uh, we had a Western that was just shooting out at Mescal and uh, they were flabbergasted at how easy it was to find people who would dress as cowboys and, and uh, cowgirls mm -hmm. and, and uh, how easily horses were available because the Western legacy is still here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, when the Westerns come back after the film incentives pass, mm -hmm. they've already got their cast and crew ready to go and their outfits and mm -hmm. everything, the, the props, yes. it's all right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also, you know, the different uh, venues that we have. We've got Mescal and even elements of Old Tucson, this, mm -hmm. and uh, some other places that are around that you can you can move around. You're not really uh, in one studio, per se, all the you're time. Right. You've got lots of choices already. Yep. yep. So we're, uh, we're, we're kind of, we're, 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 we're definitely ready and waiting. Yeah. We're ahead of that game, yeah, mm -hmm. easily, yeah. New Mexico did the same thing, though, did it not, as far as where they stopped the tax credits? Uh, their tax credits are still going. They're they're making record numbers, so that hasn't ended at all. But I want to address uh, something that is correct in what you say. Um, Tucson's proximity to Los Angeles is a big selling point. Uh, about 15 years ago, we had a feature film called Three Kings, starring Ice Cube, George Clooney, and I'm forgetting the last name of the other. But uh, it was a Warner Brothers film that was set in the, uh, the first Iraq war. And uh, we found them a location an abandoned mine that worked just fine for them and they could build sets in there and it was controllable. Uh, but one of the uh, sticking points for them, that, that one of the things that really put Tucson in favor you know, uh, of their decision was George Clooney at the time was shooting ER, the TV series, mm -hmm. and he needed to be able to fly back and forth mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. from between the two sets. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big selling point because we have about 15 or so direct flights from LA every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. uh, they're about an hour and change. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was able to stay on both sets. And that's sets. to Tucson, not even to Sky Yeah, Harbor. so that's yeah. to Tucson, right. Now, Phoenix will get a lot of filming if the incentives pass, and we will too. And the nice thing there is, sure, we're in a healthy competition with Phoenix, but they have more of the big city look. And we have more of the glorious mountains that you see behind me. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely cornered that market. They don't have the majestic mountains we do and the, the wide open spaces. So um, they might get some of the more city oriented productions, mm -hmm. but I think we'll corner anything that's outdoors. We have all the ranch lands to the south, like where the 1950s musical Oklahoma was sure, filmed. Sure. Uh, we have a lot of that in spades, so uh, I'm confident uh, our phones are going to be ringing off the hook. Sure, the yeah, that's pass. great. Yeah. Well, there, I know that there are chuck wagons and buckboards and all kinds of, of that available here locally in Tucson at the Tucson Rodeo Parade Museum. I still know that there are people around here, and I've actually seen them, where they have stage coaches. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of very qualified people out here that are uh, part of the, the ranch life, and sure. uh, they, they know stock. A lot of cattle available. It's yeah. all. It's all already here. Sure. What, what I was talking about, New Mexico. There, they started out. They had a, a very dynamic tax incentive package, and then there was another governor that came in and and sort of shortened the fuse on that somehow. And then it started going away. And then they realized quickly they made a very big mistake. And that is another misconception. It's real pretty. They're going to come no matter what. That's not the truth. True. That is not going to happen. Just right. because you got the Pacific Ocean doesn't mean you're going to stay there. That's been proven. Yeah. So, uh, at you know, Georgia, boy, did they uh, hit the uh, moon on whatever they did over there. They're I doing very well. I, I understand that the uh, that 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 this bill Senate Bill 1708 is is uh, comparable to some of the best states that are out there to attract business. So, uh, it seems like. Uh, Arizona is really going to be on the map when this happens. You are 100% correct. Uh, just like any state, uh, the, gov uh, the uh, Senator Gowan decided to write the bill at a certain level, not to ask for the moon right from the offset, right. 
uh, because he wanted to make sure it would pass. Right. Um, he's written in provisions that we can improve it year after year and make it better, which is exactly what Georgia did. It's exactly what New Mexico did. It's what Oklahoma is doing now. They've been getting a lot of filming. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm confident uh, once the productions start coming, we can fine tune it, make it even better, make ourselves even more competitive with New mm -hmm. Mexico and Georgia. Right. Heck yeah. yeah. Well, Senate Bill 1708 is available online. If you, if you do a, a web search on it, you can actually sign up for updates, which I, I believe they send them out about once a week. Um, there's a lot of information that's in the bill. It is uh, written in a, in a lot of technical sense, and it was written by some very professional people that uh, uh, that got into the the fine points as to the degrees of the, the certain percentages for the first 10 million, certain percentages for 10 million and above, and so on. And there was one in there that I that I recalled, and I I, I can't describe it correctly, I'm sure. But if there is a lease, a long-term lease, and I think it's for the sound stages. So that incentivizes, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, it gives the incentive to a developer mm -hmm. to now be able to come in and build a big box. And right. those things are not cheap. They're big high ceiling, got to have all this technical stuff. Correct. But if they can get a five-year lease on that, then they get, the, they get a tax incentive for doing that too. You're correct. Uh, this bill really incentivizes the building of sound stages and the use of post-production facilities. I've never seen a film incentive bill with this written into it, and it's, it's, I think it puts us a step ahead of everyone else. It's mm -hmm. gonna be fantastic. Yeah. Yes, yeah, now that's terrific. Well, we sure wish them all the luck in the world. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Peter? Uh, I'm excited to see this location blossom. I can't wait to market it. It's going to be great to have another Western town to push. Oh, I, I'm uh, glad you like Because they each it, have yeah. their own, they're all going to have their unique looks. Yeah. Uh, you've got these glorious mountains and saguaros behind us. Oh, that's us. the star it's, of the show. You got to be incredible. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to see. Yeah. Yeah. Arizona's just a perfect fit for all of this. So sure. uh, we're uh, we're all, all very, very supportive of your efforts. And thank you again. And sure. thank you for coming out here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm looking excited yeah. to, to see the seven. It's done. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little piece at a time. Yeah, yeah. yeah.